This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Hany Balkis. Welcome back to Future Talk right here on Pulse 95. It is me, Hani Belqisi, with Omnia Saleh. I bring you everything you need to know about what's happening in the world, tech world, in the UAE, and around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday, the 28th of April. A couple more days before we go into May. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you like Apple products but you think they're too expensive, we have the gift or uh, actually an idea for you. Because Apple is offering trade-in deals and you can get an iPhone 12 cheaper by nearly 1,800 dirhams. Yes, indeed. But around the world, China is making headlines today because they have a very interesting way of allowing their citizens to go ahead and buy a smartphone. We're going to keep you waiting to find out what that is. But let's just say you can only buy an iPhone or a phone in general with your face and nothing else but your face. Yes, and an Emirati firm is trying to strengthen fire safety measures by using virtual reality. Yes, indeed. In the world of apps, lots is happening as well because we're going to be talking all about Apple's latest iOS update that has been giving iPhone users much easier access to their phone, especially if they're wearing face mask. But there is a catch to this well-known feature that a lot of people have been waiting for and we're going to be telling you all about this catch in just a few moments yes and a mother has made communication easier for autistic children with the help of an app we got a lot in store for you guys today ladies and gentlemen so keep pulse 95 locked because we're going to be right back daily digital news bits and bytes connect our world your quick roundup of everything that is happening in the tech world, in the UAE and around the world. Today, we're talking all about getting our gadgets at a cheaper price, especially if you're living right here in the UAE, because Apple loves to recycle its old gadgets, whether it was old iPhones, old AirPods, you name it. You can always go ahead and trade it back to get something new. So with MacBooks, you can take your old MacBook and get a cheaper discount or a better price on the newer MacBook by simply giving away your older one back to Apple. And now Apple is doing the same with the iPhone 12 because they're offering people a cheaper iPhone 12 if they go ahead and trade in their older iPhones. And these trade-in values can be up to about 1,800, so 1,800 dirhams. Yes, Apple's websites did show that consumers can get up to 1,700 and 90 dirhams value for an iPhone 11 Pro Max, around 1600 dollars for an iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and a 1200 dollars for iPhone 11, and a thousand for an iPhone XS Max. And if you want to know the continuation of those prices, do go and check out Apple's website. But an iPhone 12 with a 6.1 inch display is priced at 3400 dirhams at Apple's UAE's website. Meanwhile, the iPhone 12 Pro Max with FaceTime is priced around 4500 on online shops so you're getting around a 1100 cheaper deal if you buy it from apple's uae website yes indeed but upon purchasing that new iphone apple will go ahead and add uh, and apply the value towards the purchase or the recycling the device for free so there's a big list of how many or how much money you'd get for every iphone if you go ahead and trade it in so the highest i think is the iphone 11 if you go ahead and trade it in uh, your iPhone 11 Pro Max, to be exact, you would get an amount of about 1,790 dirhams. And that's not money in cash, but rather money that you can go ahead and exchange. So you'd get the newer iPhone uh, for that price. Yes, so I do believe that it's a great initiative by Apple to make people want to recycle more. And they don't just uh, kind of... Uh, have their phones in their houses without them using it and not them uh, actually benefiting from it. I know a lot of people that have phones all the way to the iPhone 4, yes. the 4S, the 4G. They just have it in their house. They don't use it. So uh, with Apple implementing something like this, is going to be an, a great incentive for people to sell their iPhones to Apple. Therefore, Apple does win the recycling and you get a cheaper iPhone. Let us know if you guys have done this. If you have traded in your iPhones and got the newer iPhone, for much cheaper 4215 dual slots or on our Instagram at Pulse95 Radio. Daily digital news. Bits and bytes connect our world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we do know China is always doing something weird when it does come to online buying, online social accounts. We do know that if you want to create a Facebook account, you do need to put in your ID and your passport in China before you create one. I don't even think... Uh, 
Facebook, China is allowed in Facebook anyways, or Facebook yeah, is allowed in own, China. They have their own version of it on WeChat, I think. Yes, but in China now, you can no longer buy a smartphone without a face scan. Now, we do kind of uh, kind of expected it from China. China wants to know each and everything and each and every product coming in, in and out of China. But now, going to the extent of saying, hey, even if you want to buy a phone, you need to have your face provided, a face scan. They need to know who you are and what phone you're buying. Yes, indeed. And, and it's interesting because we see different phones implementing face recognition technology. But never did I think we're going to use face recognition technology to allow people to own a phone to begin with. Now, the whole reason behind this is censorship, making sure that the government always has a record and a database of everyone who owns a phone and what they look like exactly. The Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology did say that they will also be preventing people from exchanging their mobile numbers if they did not go ahead and provide a face scan. So even people who have previously had a phone, they're not you know, they're not planning to buy a new phone anytime soon. They still have to go ahead and give a face scan. And this is all as a part of increasing the supervision, increasing the inspection that's happening. So they want to try and prevent as many hacks that tend to happen out of people's phone numbers. So you would get a lot of scams usually from unknown numbers calling you, sending you messages that you've won, let's say, 10,000 dirhams, 50,000 dirhams. But at the end of the day, you don't know who these people are. And, you know, the government may have a database or a data log of all the numbers in the country with their IDs, but sometimes things go off the record. And sometimes people will buy a number from a certain ID by using, like, let's say, our Emirates ID, but then they would gift that number to someone else, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So it's good to have a face scan in certain ways. <laughs> don't know how ethical that would be around the world, but in China, I mean, it works. Yeah, in China, we do know that they like to have, keep track of all their citizens, what they do and how they do things. But again, uh, if we want to look at it at different types of ways, yes, it could be amazing because it will reduce scams because obviously um, if phone A is sending messages to phone B, well, who owns phone A? Well, yes. we know who owns phone A because he scanned his face when he bought it. So uh, with this type of thing, it does kind of uh, make it easier for the Chinese government and Chinese officials to keep track of their citizens, which in some parts of the country, yeah, a lot of people would not like that. But in China, they like it. They know, they know what's best for them. But I want to know your guys' thoughts. 4215, do it thoughts, or on our Instagram at Pulse95 Radio. Are you the type of person who would like their phone or like their face be scanned before they buy a phone? Do you think it's okay or not? I know that at sometimes um, it's okay. For example, like Omnia mentioned, if you buy a SIM card, your Emirates ID. Yeah. If you, uh, there's some things in life you need to provi provide a proof of authentication, an ID, a proof of identity. But do we really need a proof of identity when we're buying a phone? Mm, that's a good one. I think... Proof of identity is, is fine, but biometric is, is a whole other level. And I know we're moving to an age and a day where people are soon going to be, you know, your, we, we talked about this earlier uh, on the show, your face will be your new passport one day. And soon enough, we won't even need uh, passwords or usernames or anything like that. But I think it's just, it's a little too soon and a little too censored for China to be able to control all of its citizens at once. Yeah, let us know what you guys think. 4215, do it slots or on Instagram at Pulse95 Radio. We're going to be taking a short break, but when we come back, we're talking all about a local firm and how they are training their, uh, their fire, for fire safety measures using virtual reality. Check this out. Check this out. Whenever we talk about virtual reality, we immediately think of gaming. We think of recently the healthcare industry because they were actually using virtual reality to train nurses and healthcare, healthcare practitioners, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. But never did I think that virtual reality could be used to help train firefighters on how to deal with fires. Yes, I mean, and we're looking at virtual reality and how, it, just like Omni said, it's often popped up during the discussion of gaming, and it's uh, it's, a, it's largely seen as a technology which does create a realistic digital arena for players. But again, recent developments have highlighted the role of virtual reality in more diverse fields. But right here in the UAE, we're looking at a way that people are training uh, 
to actually strengthen fire safety measures using virtual reality. Yes, indeed. And virtual reality has also been used in the past to boost skills from, you know, skills of everyone, drivers, pilots, healthcare practitioners, you name it, because the best thing about VR is it can create a simulation of what would happen in real life, but you're removing the risk factor. You're removing the danger from it all and all the rough conditions. So an Emirati firm actually created a VR powered training program so that they can go ahead and enhance the fire safety that is present at any organizations, at any company. And this virtual fire training program makes sure that the staff members of any company that will choose to work and to get that training can go ahead and be able to know how to deal with risks, with fire risks, with any real life disasters, just by experiencing them through a simulation. Yes, indeed. Now, the simulation does transport people into the middle of the action from the comfort of their own room without posing any actual real threat to their personal safety. Now, this method does cut down the need to use the premises of an office or even a hotel to train the employees and will actually allow organizations to do away with disruptive drills when the workforce is divided into teams. In fact, the virtual reality product does make sure every individual gets the same experience and equal attention during the exercise. Now, we're looking at it as we do know that with any exercise, any drill, you're going to be, uh, you know, creating a mock-up of a fire. Yeah. If it's police, they'll create, a, let's say, for example, a hostage scene, a bank robbery scene, and they'll train those, those uh, police officers as so. And with firefighters, they'll train them as so. They'll have a mock fire and they'll say, hey, there's a kid inside, go and save him. <laughs> but with this, you don't have to use all these resources. You don't have to use all this time and effort. But instead, you do have a virtual reality that will give you the kind of same feeling and same drills. And uh, I, I do believe virtual reality has been used in training even the U.S. Army back in 2006 and 2008. I remember um, I watched a video online where the U.S. Army was actually training using virtual reality and even video games. Absolutely. And what's interesting about it is just like you mentioned, Hani, we've everyone here is the fire drill every now and then, whether it was in their apartment or in their company. And many people, honestly, over time start to ignore them. We hear them so often that we don't regard them as a real threat. But with using virtual reality, instead of creating these drills over time or even specifying or getting a whole team to train your own team how to deal with a fire you'll just need the virtual reality headset and the program plug it into a computer and everyone can get a quick crash course on how to deal with fire and what to do in the event of a fire have you ever been a part of a fire drill in school or university or you name it yes of course uh, every uh, i do believe every couple of months they'll give us a fire drill and how to escape or if yes. um I think it's not just for the students, for the teachers as well. So we know our surroundings and know every entry and exit point. And uh, I think uh, it's, it's it's very important. And I'm trying to even imagine how fun it would have been, been as a kid yeah. if I had VR uh, fire drills. Totally. Let us know your thoughts. 4215 to Salat or sign into our DMs at Pulse95 Radio. Would you like to get a quick crash course on how to deal with a fire if you could do it through virtual reality. Coming up on the show, we're talking all about our iPhones finally recognizing our faces while we have face masks on. But there is a catch to it and you got to stay tuned to find out all about it. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to win 500 drums in cash this Ramadan. We've been uh, playing a game with you, a riddle game. And uh, if you get the question right, if you get the riddle right, you have a chance to win 500 dirhams. And the question will actually, the answer, or the winner will be announced at 9.30 p.m. today, just like every day, every weekday, mm-hmm. with Evening Karak, with Mikhail Atiyah and Aisha Namazmi. And uh, again, I've lost the second day in a row. Oh, you did? Yeah. I thought we didn't give an answer. Let me see. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know it yesterday at all. I didn't even have no, a guess. I, ha- I had an answer in my brain. I thought it was your conscious Oh, I would see that. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, I'm smarter than that. Yeah, I, th- I feel like I that would have worked. I was too smart for the riddle. <laughs> you see, these riddles, they're interesting because they're not very complicated. They're, the, the answer is sometimes too simple, but you need to think intelligently about it without overthinking, which is a very hard balance to do. Yeah. But 
There's no worries. If you didn't get yesterday's answer right, you still have a chance today. It's a brand new day with a brand new 500 dirhams ready to be in someone's pocket. But the question for today is, after a fall, I decided or I decide to take over. Then life starts to stall or starts to grow slower. Yes. Now, again, we'll say it one more time. After a fall, I decide to take over. Then life starts to stall or starts to grow slower. I think it's pretty easy. It's one of the easiest uh, riddles really? for you. Yes, yeah, super easy. Can I have a tip? It's cold outside. I don't want, you don't need a tip. <laughs> What's wrong? It's cold outside. You don't need a tip. I still can't get it. Yeah, read it. Honestly, my mind yeah. is just, my mind is stalling right now. After a fall, I decide to take over. The life starts to stall. It starts to grow slower. <laughs> Honey, give me a tip. Nope, it's too cold to give you a tip, Omnia. Okay, we need we need to we need to discuss this later. Yeah, well, I have uh, no idea. So wait, is it in the the whole aspect is in the cold? Yes. Is it snow? <laughs> oh, is it? It is. It is snowfall. <laughs> it's snow. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna give. Okay, uh, okay. I, I want people to. Guys, uh, I think I think I think we got brain. our tip. Come on, just a little tip. I told you it's too cold to give you a tip. Is it snowfall? Tell it me has yes to do no. with the cold weather. I think yeah. I think you're right. It is snowfall. <laughs> if I said Muslim Mikhailati are tuning in, they're gonna kill me. After a fall, I decide to, to take, take over. over the, After I yeah. fall, I decide to take over. Then mm. life starts to, to stall, stall or starts to, to grow, grow slower. slower. Yes. What does snow have to do with anything? Snowfall. <laughs> he got so mad. Snowfall. No. Yeah. It's like wrong. you know how when snow falls, life in like in the UK things shut down. Yeah. What season is that? Winter. <laughs> yeah, it could be both ways. It could be the season or it could be the, <laughs> the snowfall. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's enough uh, hints and it's discussion enough. for uh, today's riddle. 4215.slot <laughs> or on Instagram at Pulse95 Radio. I think uh, the question is, uh, and the answer actually, Pretty is simple. loud and clear. So uh, do text in your answers, 4215.slot or on our Instagram at Pulse. No, not even on Instagram. Only texting us in yes. on 4215. The chance to win 500 drums with Makeda Ali and Aisha and Madison at 9.30 p.m. On evening Kalak. But let's get into the business, ladies and gentlemen, because Apple's iOS 14.5 update will allow users to unlock their iPhones while wearing face masks. But here's the catch the update will only work if users also have an Apple Watch. Now, this is great news for everyone who owns an Apple Watch, but not so great for those who don't want to go ahead and spend more money on an Apple Watch. We've heard of the iOS 14.5. It's been it's been everywhere. It's been all over social media platforms. And the reason why it got so famous is because people were finally excited or people were excited that they finally can unlock their phones with a face mask on. But as a user of an iPhone in an Apple ecosystem, you do need to have an um, Apple Watch mm. for this feature to be enabled because it's very similar to how your MacBook would work. So with a MacBook computer, you can unlock your your MacBook by simply having your Apple Watch on. It'll vibrate and you'll get that little bit of a haptic sensation and your laptop will go ahead and unlock. But with an iPhone, it's been very frustrating that if you have a face mask on, the face recognition does not recognize you unless you take the face mask off. So this new update was actually finally out for everyone to use yesterday so or two days ago. So you might have already downloaded it. If not, go ahead and check it out on your system general preferences. You'll find the update there. And once you download it, if you have an Apple Watch, you'll go ahead and unlock your device while the lower half of your face is still covered with that face mask and you will not have to go ahead and enter your passcode. Yes, so uh, let us know. If you are so excited for this update and then Apple's like, nope, you need an Apple Watch. But I mean, <laughs> most people who do have Apple uh, Apple iPhones have Apple Watches as uh, the synergy or the synchronization or just like I like to call it, the ecosystem of Apple and iOS, they all connect with one another. And again, I kind of did uh, anticipate something like this happening just because of the ease of access. 4215, Durat Salat. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be taking a short break. But when we come back, we're talking all about mothers. Pulse 95.
apps all around. What's worth a click and download? Today's application is aimed towards people of determination and caregivers and parents of those people of determination, more specifically those who have autism, because there is a mother right here living in the UAE who created an application to help her autistic child communicate with the world at a much easier pace and to also help them learn their basics in school. Yes, now we do know that fear, denial, confusion, or even helplessness at times is the feeling of being a parent to an autistic child. And a lot can actually agree. And I've seen it hand in hand before. Again, I talk about this every time we talk about autistic people. I have my cousin who is autistic and I know how my aunt used to feel when we were kids. But the emotion of being there, them being there for them is alike. And uh, again, people all around the world uh, need to remember that autistic people, they need a little bit more attention and care than the normal human being. Yes, indeed. But what autistic people have and one skill that they're very good at is they're much more receptive to learning and communicating with a visual cue. So show them something and they'll easily communicate with you at a much faster pace than if you go ahead and tell them something. And sadly, today's education system is not well-rounded yes. to aim and easing to aim to ease this process for those autistic children and this is exactly why this mother created an application that is called fabula it's spelled f-a-b-u-l-a-a and let me tell you honey it is fabulous yeah Yeah. i mean uh, it is it was it's an app that's created to help children communicate better and actually has four main built-in features speech phrases cards and scribble and the speech feature actually does convert speech into text by allowing users to record messages and even use their mobile device as a physical speech bubble. The phrase is then an edible preloaded library of commonly used sentences that are actually given a voice with the click of a button. Now cards actually do contain images that describe a single or more word when clubbed together. Now these cards can form a sentence for playback and the last feature, Scribble, which is a freehand tool that allows you to draw objects or write sentences. Now, it reminds me of uh, the Nintendo DS. I don't know, yeah. Omni, if you had the, you had it. There was a feature where you can you could scribble. It's so, it was so send, fun. <laughs> I think it was called uh, uh, Picto. No, I don't know. Picto? I can't remember, but I remember playing it. But it's interesting because just like you mentioned, honey, especially for autistic children, it helps them communicate easy in a much easier way. So yeah. whether it was feeling, expressing themselves, imagining certain things, or even um, reimagining what a social interaction would be like, you can do that all through this application. Now, the application caters to pretty much any age group and all age groups. It's not difficult to use, whether we're talking about kids, adults, or senior, me- senior members of any society. Fabula will be able to give something to everyone. So anyone who struggles to communicate, it's like putting words in your own hand. That's exactly what the app does. Because let's say you want to say, I want to drink water. The application will encourage you to go ahead and draw that or draw a scribble that would help symbolize that. So when you're out there in the in the real world with friends to interact with, you can slowly learn to gain that little bit of a push, that little bit of a confidence to go ahead and say it, say it, especially because people of determination, more specifically autistic people, they can have a tough time sharing their desires, talking about what is okay with them and what is not. So teaching them how to be vocal through a little bit of a game is definitely going to, I feel like, be beneficial for them. Yeah, and getting back to you with that Nintendo DS, it is called Picto Chat. Picto Chat. Yeah, Picto Chat. And again, no. Uh, People with autism, they do have a hard time uh, explaining or exploring or even uh, controlling their emotions. So having an app like that, making it show how easy it is to communicate uh, and and kind of giving them a different median on how to express themselves using an app is very important. And again, we look at this time and time again. Uh, when an app is created, it's always influenced by something so personal. And for a mother to create this for her child and for children around the world, not only in the UAE, that is amazing. And the app, one more time, is called Fabula, and it's called it's spelled F A B. U-L-A-A. Yes, indeed. Let us know if you know anyone in your life who struggles with autism or if you yourself have a sibling or a child who struggles with autism. Go ahead and check it out. I think it would be a great fun way to 
enjoy a little bit yes. of a conversation, but also it's to games teach them. as well. Yeah, it's a game, but it also teaches fun. them how to be more vocal. Future yeah. Talk is coming to an end, but you can catch us again tomorrow, same time, same place, from 2 to 3 p.m. If you liked this episode of Future Talk, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Pulse 95.